I am Jeffrey Kluger, author of Apollo 8 and editor-at-large at Time Magazine. I'm John Sterling, the editor of Apollo 8. Jeff, you got to know Jim Lovell really well while working with him on your book about Apollo 13. And in some ways, all these years later, this book serves as a prequel to that mm -hmm. one. Um, it must have been fun to, to talk with him about, about this mission. And, and I'm wondering, did, do you think he learned anything on Apollo 8 that, that helped him survive and, and to command his spacecraft through the disaster that was Apollo 13? I do, and I think he learned two or three very important things. First of all, he did learn that he loves lunar flight. And so he did know that when I get back, I'm going to be right back in the rotation. So it cemented his desire to go back and land on the moon. Um, he learned something about command, uh, and he learned something about working with a rookie in the case of Bill Anders. And that was very good, because when he flew Apollo 13, both of the astronauts on his crew were rookies. And they were both rookies who were faced with a life and death situation no one else ever had been. Um, in one of the great serendipitous moments that came as a result of an accident um, or an error, on their way back from the moon on Apollo 8, uh, Jim accidentally, he was, had not slept, he was very fatigued, and he punched the wrong command into, a com into the computer, orienting the spacecraft. Well, he punched a command into the computer telling the spacecraft it was back on the launch pad. So instead of flying with its tidy nose forward position, it flipped straight up with its nose up as if it was waiting to take off. And every time they tried to force it back into its proper attitude, it went right back up. So he, he obeyed question number one or, or rule number one. When you're in a problem, don't make it worse by trying to fix it until you know what you're doing. So they just let the ship do what it wanted to do, pointing nose up. He realized what he had done. He also realized that the spacecraft had completely lost its orientation. In order for it to get its orientation back, he had to do a, what was called a course sighting, C-O-A-R-S-E sighting pointing to three stars, getting the orientation, and saying, OK, now the spacecraft has a rough idea of where it is. And then refine that sighting by taking, uh, triangulating on more and more obscure and dimmer stars. Once he had done that, he had a precise orientation for the spacecraft. And he did have in the back of his head, that would be an interesting procedure for any future astronaut to have in his back pocket because if you ever have a catastrophic failure and you lose your guidance system, you're going to have to be able to get it back. And as it happens, serendipitously, 16 months later, Jim Lovell is on Apollo 13. He has precisely that problem and is the only man in the astronaut corps who is uniquely positioned to solve it because he had done so once before.